Hello everybody, this is Yoko's Anime Reactions, and this is going to be my review for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Episode 10. Uh, we have started the new arc, essentially, and uh, yeah, 50 years have passed, and like I, my question before from last episode, um, whether Arena was pregnant at the time, it was actually answered. She was. Because she ends up having a grandson, Joseph Joestar, who does look like his father. Or his grandfather, I mean, but he's not like his grandfather. He, uh, does care, but he has more of a temper, and he's not really a gentleman, to be honest. And he, apparently, hormone can be inherited, because he has the ability to do that when he is, well, when he's ticked off. But yeah, this does happen 50 years later, uh, in 1938, I think. <coughs> And we see Joseph Joestar for the first time in where he's getting, he is, he's pickpocketed essentially when he goes to get something at a food, co a food state, a food, blah, 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 blah. Uh, a food cart, I guess you would say. And the guy would look like he was selling, <laughs> like he was selling Coca-Cola bottles, I guess because it, it just came out. But yeah, he went to buy one and the guy, the kid snatched his wallet while it was in his hand and he ran off. Sadly, we end up running into some corrupt police officers who chastise him for doing that, but they tell him that in order to turn a blind eye to this, he'd have to give them 20 bucks every time and half of what he grabs. And Joseph pops up and tells him to put him down because that wasn't a crime because he'd given it to him as a gift and he was trying to, you know, get the guy, he was trying to cover for him. And the corrupt police officer, the fat one, did something extremely gross. He picked his nose and he wiped what he picked out of it on Joseph's face. That is disgusting. And, uh, yeah, I do not blame Joseph at all for punching him. I don't blame him. I probably would, I'd probably do something similar. I'd probably either kick the person or punch him or something. Because, yeah, that's disgusting. Hmm? Sorry, I thought I heard someone coming down the stairs. I guess I must be hearing things. Or maybe that was outside. I don't know. Anyway, he punches the guy and uh, knocks some teeth out in the process. And the other guy threatens him with a gun. And Jojo tells him that... Uh, Joseph tells him that he's going to break his finger before he can even pull the trigger. And he that's when he uses his hormone. And it, hits the, it goes through the bottle. And it knocks the cap off and sends it flying like as fast as a bullet. And it hits the guy's finger and breaks it. And now both of them are on the ground. And he grabs the other guy and runs. And come to find out that, yeah, Arena was pregnant. She had a kid. And hit her kid grew up, got married, and had Joseph. But apparently, uh, her son and her daughter and her daughter-in-law, essentially, uh, died to war and sickness from what they said. And, uh, yeah, Speedwagon apparently is also doing very well for himself in oil businesses. And one of the other monks, uh, ends up getting contacted by him. And they show him something in Mexico that is very, um, very just not good. Tons of those stone masks are found in a big open tomb or ruin or something. And apparently there's a carving of a guy on the tree, but it's not a carving. It's someone who's like in, uh, I guess a state of spending animation or something. And Speedwagon wants him to use his hormone to wake, to destroy him before, I guess, he can do anything. But, the guy ends up doing something the complete opposite. He kills all the people that are with them and even kills Speedwagon because he wants the power of the stone mask to be young forever like Dio was. Because hormone can help with the aging process, but it's not going to ultimately stop it completely. It'll just, uh, it'll just ter deter it a little bit. So yeah, Speedwagon is dead, so that means the only family that Joseph's got left is Arena. Because <coughs> I'm guessing that he was an only child. And the pickpocket, Smokey is actually taken in by Irina, and they end up becoming friends. I don't know how long this was before, but apparently this happened in 1938. I don't know, but... 
yeah. Arena's not afraid to smack Joseph upside the head for what he for the bad stuff he does. And yeah. Uh, racism is alive and well in this part of the story because they go to a fancy restaurant and one of the patrons is talking about Smokey like he's a beast and asking why they are allowed in here. So yeah, racism and, seg racism and segregation are alive and well at this point. And Joseph doesn't take too kindly to this. And neither does Irina, because I was figuring she would tell him not to fight the guy. No, she tells him to do it and to teach him a lesson. And how does he uh, predict the future on what the guy is going to say? I can understand, you know, the clues, picking up the clues as to what happened. Like with the blood on the guy's shirt, uh, none being on the jacket, stuff like that. But how did he know what he was going to say? But anyway, the guy tries to pick a fight with him and tries to get him with brass knuckles. And you'd think that he got him, but no. He was punching a, a lamppost? Some, not a lamppost, a, uh, the thing that a lamp sits on, the tall one. That you can move around with the, on the wheels. He was punching that and he got it right in his hand. The sharp points in his hand. And, yeah, the guy got his butt kicked because of this. Because apparently he was in the Mafia, and a Mafia guy came over and informed uh, Joseph and the others that Speedwagon is dead and that he was killed possibly by a Tibetan monk. And, obviously, Irina does not take this well, and she explains about the whole- she tells Joseph about the whole mask and Dio thingy that happened 50 years ago, and doesn't want him to get involved in this because she's in he's essentially the only family she's got left. And later, they're at a coffee shop and apparently, uh... There's something in a magazine about breast implants? And then Joseph knows the guy that killed Speedwagon and the others standing outside and... Yeah, he notices immediately that the guy has fangs and can't, doesn't have cold breath, you know, breath looking cold when he comes out in the cold. And he pulls out a gun some, from somewhere, I don't know where he got it from, and shoots up the freaking coffee shop, but only shooting that guy. In indicating, essentially, that he, as he says, that that was for Speedwagon. While crying. So, yeah, you messed with the wrong family, man. It was bad enough to take that mask and become immortal. You had to take, you had to hurt Speedwagon and bring Joseph and Rita into this. You couldn't have left them alone and just gone about your life. No. Actually, that was his first mistake. D killing Speedwagon... He could have just knocked Speedwagon out and taken the mask and used it. <coughs> <coughs> then he could have just left and gone on his day. He could have just done that and just lived out his life like he planned on doing. He had he didn't have to get Joseph and Arena and Speedwagon involved in all this, but now they're going to be involved and he's going to probably get his butt kicked. Oh no, he just set himself up for failure. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you all next time.